Paddy, Paddy Schneider, uh, Head of Tax BDO. I'm going to talk to us about a, a topic um, I think that uh, is probably the basis of many discussions and disputes with SARS, financial services and, and apportionment. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks, Paddy. I think uh, Prof. Lilla's text is right behind you, Peter. She would tell you that Wikipedia is not a reliable source. Um, but be that as it may. Um, the other thing, just on closing on, on Rich's um, presentation here, if you go to, uh, to Europe, they actually get that right very easily. They actually only say that if the invoice is made to you or you issue an invoice, you are deemed to be the principal in any of it. We should actually just make it simple, Lynette. Don't you think? Lynette is on the SARS side. Who else is from SARS? Okay, so I, I will only knock Lynette in a personal capacity then today. If I may. Um, what I'm going to look at today is just a brief overview of Vatican Financial Services. I've, I've spent some time on Vatican Financial Services. I'm looking at some of the uh, sections in the VAT Act uh, specifically to, to fin financial services. Then I'm going to have a brief standstill at apportionment, looking at some of the issues, some of the issues where SARS got it wrong and get, got it right. Um, imported services, VAT, or as they call that in, in Europe, reverse charging. And then just the lingo, the VAT and the, in, uh, the industry language. And then touching briefly on that and short-term insurance, that and derivatives like swaps, futures, and options, and that and softing. Now, softing is a swear word if, if there's a SARS official in the room. So we'll call it commission sharing for purposes of this presentation. And then finally, just that and script lending, just indicating some of the interesting issues in, uh, in financial services specifically and some of the issues that I believe that the, the Act is not catering for, for effectively. Last year, I was just telling Reg, I could not figure this thing out. It took me half an hour. Let's see. Special bad treatment of financial services, and there's a spelling mistake on this, so I have to talk to my PA afterwards. Who can spot the spelling mistake? You get a prize. I'll give you a hug. If you're a man. Well, if you remember as well. It's, yeah, it's not the less day of the day. Um, so, an uh, ideal VAT system, what is an ideal VAT system? And that sort of forms the basis to discuss any type of exempt supplies like financial services. And the ideal VAT basis has a broad base, as broad as possible. It's got minimal exemptions and it's got minimal zero ratings except to the extent that you want to remove from the tax foreign consumption, because the real base of a tax system is to tax final domestic consumption. Now, the only way to do that if there's cross-border type of transactions is actually to zero rate those type of transactions. Exemptions is or should actually be tried to avoid as far as possible in a VAT system, and. I'm glad you haven't got the mic now, Peter. Um, but you would probably agree with me. The only reasons why normally VAT systems across the globe use exemption is twofold, or twofold. The, the one being it's difficult to tax type of transactions, like financial services, and the other one is merit goods. And, and those normally follow lobbying, extensive lobbying by, for instance, the guys that can read, the librarians, etc., to get get books exempt, etc., like that. But preferably, if you want to remove the VAT from a, from, from a product or a commodity, you should actually zero rate and not, uh, not exempt, because the VAT component actually still remains in that commodity. Then exempt suppliers, I've, I've, I've touched...